three, two, one, go. Alrighty, as I've said, welcome to Out There Somewhere. This is a, I want to say, 2D portal kind of game, if that makes sense. Um, the section you just saw that I skipped, the, that kind of reminded you of Gradius, maybe. Um, there's not really much to do there, except for dying, because at the end there would be an unkillable boss. And yeah, yeah, so you die anyways. Exactly, so we just make sure we die as soon as possible and get into the main thing, which is this, obviously. So as you can see, we have this little portal cannon and we use that for movement mainly. Um, and also, obviously, for skipping stuff, which is going to happen right now, hopefully. If this I don't mess this up. Pretty tricky. It is really tricky. What we have to abuse here... Nice, second try is really good, actually. Um, what we have to abuse here... Wait, give me a second. Okay, nice. <laughs> Got it, nice. Right. Um, it's only a six-minute run, so I really have to make sure I get everything in here. Um, we abuse the fact that right after using the portal gun... Oh, boy. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Right after using the portal gun, we still have a little bit of ground to work with, although we are already in the air. So, on that invisible ground, we can still make a jump work, and then we just turn around, do a little bit of a circle jump, and then we can get out of bounds. So you saw me grabbing uh, extra heart. This is not for safety or not for like marathon strats. This is 100% the intended route. And actually, I'm going to go out of bounds here yet again to grab a third heart to make a little bit of a damage boosting section later on in the run. There we go. That's all the extra hearts that we are going to get. And also with all the out of bounds, we have skipped quite a bit of the early game puzzling already. Nice. That's actually fairly precise as well. Alrighty. That's actually pretty good so far. I'm very happy with that. I always dread the very first out of bounds, but we got it uh, second try. So I can't really complain at all. Why do I talk to you? Hi, alien. There you go. Said hi to the alien. That's always nice. Hi. <laughs> and yeah, since this is uh, any percent in game time, uh, stuff like this little menu where I picked up uh, the gauss gun, which is going to be our way of damaging stuff or destroying stuff. Uh, and really any uh, cutscene like this one as well uh, don't really cost us time since we time again with the in-game timer which means that whenever there are like little menus or cutscenes we can in theory take our time and like regroup at the end of a run if we feel like we're on good pace but I'm not going to do that obviously since this is a marathon and there's also the little bit of uh, real-time pressure, I guess you could say. So this is the first section that we are actually doing in a speedrun. The first little puzzle section. Um, it's really easy. It's the second one in the game, so it's still not too difficult. Most of this stuff is intended. Um, it's just really clever routing that you have to do if you if you learn this game. Oops, took damage so I couldn't shoot. Okay, last room coming up. This one is a little tricky. Nice, got it. It's really wastes some time if you hit one of those uh, mirror blocks because then your shot gets reflected all the way across the screen again and you get to where you started essentially. Okay, we got that cycle. Died though, okay, that's fine. Luckily we took the save because this is definitely somewhat precise. There we go. That's the trickiest part of this game really. Let's try this. No, didn't get it. So the backup. Um, the trickiest part, to me at least, is um, making sure that before you actually shoot... Come on! <laughs> the teleshot that you're actually grounded again, so you can actually, well, jump after you arrive. That's definitely taking takes some time to getting used to. Alrighty, done with the tower. Definitely a somewhat intense section, especially the first room where... Well, I died, so that made sense. So this game really has a little oh, okay, Made it. <laughs> a little bit of everything in my opinion because in this section here, uh, we are actually going to do a little bit of a death abuse. So you saw me skipping the save point uh, in the top right corner if you see it next to the green uh, to the green beam, and also this one I'm hopefully going to skip. Okay, and I'm intentionally taking damage already to speed up the dying process later on. We have to talk to this guard alien. 
to damn it, damn it. To speed up. No, not to speed up. Give me a second. Alrighty. To skip to open this door right here. That's why we needed to talk to him. And yeah, then we had the death abuse, warped all the way back to the room, and then getting the jump underneath that thromp kind of enemy is actually fairly precise again. So you could technically go around, but I don't like to do that because it doesn't look as cool. But then again, I died four times, so who am I to judge? Talking as long as it looks cool, right? Exactly, that's what it's about. Talking to this alien again, little death abuse. And then we have also unlocked the next door. Can I get this one, Psycho? Nice. So the door again to the top right is now unlocked because we talked to the alien. Oh, damn it. So yeah, you need to be one block away from the wall in order for the teleshot to actually work. So that's why it didn't work there. And that's also why those out of bounces that I did earlier are so difficult. I need to absolutely make sure I get far away from the far away enough from the wall and also still have my upwards momentum from the jump in order to get this going. Nice. That worked. Nice. Little damage boost. Green beam jump right here. And now we have those them I missed that up. Wow. That's fine. We are going to have one more actually. So I'm hoping I'm getting the second one at least then, so you can see kind of what it looks like. There we go. So in the taking damage animation, but you can still, right after taking the hit, you can still jump. And that gives you an uncontrollable but very high jump. Green beam jump right there. Again abusing the same mechanics as in the out of bounds, where you abuse the fact that for a short moment after landing, you still have a, the ground underneath you, although obviously you, you shouldn't have. Okay, triple cross, giving me a little bit of a hard time. Nice. We're skipping a guard section here again, where we would need to talk to one of those guys to unlock a gate for us again. Let's just do this the normal way. I tried to do a fancy strat, but it's fine. It's actually impossible cl climbing when you try to do fa the fancy strat. So let's not do that. Boss is coming up. Yep. You don't have to shoot here, but it looks cool. Again, it's all about the cool strats. Taking this safety save definitely, because I'm expecting to die here for sure. If I mess up, get three shots in. Only took one damage, that's perfect actually. So when entering the room, I shot a tele shot all the way across it. So I'm on this side already, which enables me to do this. And that's the quick kill, which is actually precise. No, 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 no! Okay. <laughs> I need to pick this up. That's fairly important. That's the whole reason we came here. I can't, fun part. I, I can't leave without it. And yeah, if you like the Gradius part at the beginning, well, there you go. That's the final boss of the game. Time, is, com it. time is coming up as I lose movement and he's destroyed. Which is now! Time! Okay, that's underestimate. I'm, I'm surprised. That's a pretty good. Better than practice. That is better than practice, but practice never is good. So yeah, um, this was out there somewhere, if you're interested in running the game. You have cool music, obviously, as you can hear. And there are several different routes that people are definitely willing to t uh, teach you about, like a beginner's route, uh, and so forth. Do you maybe have like a Discord that we do people have a can Discord. join? We have the Discord. Um, we have, obviously, a speedrun.com page with a lot of resources. So if that looked fun to you, definitely try get into it, at least with the beginner route. You, you can't go wrong, in my opinion. So yeah, that's it for me already. It's a short run, what can I say? Thank you so much for playing and welcome to EC. <laughs>
uh, page together with the first stream or stream one or whatever you want to call it, mainstream, whatever. So since we're sharing it with them, it's kind of difficult to know which one is to this stream and which one is to the other stream. That's why we usually ask you to hashtag stream two so we know about that. Uh, if there's any donation recently that has been was supposed to be meant to this channel um, and you forgot about the hashtag feel free to just PM this uh, uh, streamer account and we can read it up here it's no worries uh, otherwise it's a little bit difficult for us to know if it was uh, misplaced um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not really much to say. I'm trying to fill the time here, talking about random stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I can do like this. Do you have any questions that you might want to ask us about the event or in, in general in the chat? Feel free to do so. I'm just trying to fill out the time anyway. Um, I will answer anything as best as I can. But uh, by the next event, if you mean ESA, then it will be the next summer, of course. Uh, ESA is also usually at DreamHack. We usually be we show are there at DreamHack Summer and DreamHack Winter, so you can also check us out there. We have a short thing with speedruns even there um, yeah what's my favorite color hmm well since pink fluffy unicorn I would say pink but it, there's so many great colors you have purple you have blue you have green too many good to, to pick between. I'm sorry. Uh, the venue is usually a sport arena that is accurate. Uh, I'm not really from this part of Sweden, so I don't know that well it, that well much of this. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a sport arena that we rented even last year and came back to this year. Oh, my favorite casual game. That's so difficult to say. You will, you will have to add a genre to that. Otherwise, I would not be able to answer the question. I'm sorry. That's too hard. What should you eat for dinner? Hmm. It depends on what you have eaten before, I guess. I mean, some people have... Like the the leftover pizza, and some people have I don't know, whatever, whatever suits you. I, I would say that. Oh, favorite casual RPG game. Well, since I started with the Shin Megami Tensei series uh, recently, I love the SMT games. They are amazing. If you want to play a game that is completely touch your soul in every way possible because the, the game story is so deep, I definitely recommend you to try out the SMT series. Uh, there is also a very good RPG game that is for uh, GameCube that is called Balin Kaitos that not many people know about. Uh, it's very very different. It's very similar to Final Fantasy games, but still on its own. Uh, so I definitely recommend that too. It's, like I said, it's not well known. So definitely give that a try. If I've ever played Conker's Bad Fur Day, I don't even know what it is, so I would probably say no to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, SMT stands for Shimigami Tensei, which is an RPG series made from Atlas. Uh, it's from Japan. 
Uh, they have done many different series, like, uh, of course, the SMTs, but they have also done the Persona. Atlas has also done, for example, Catherine, uh, which is not together with the SMTs, of course, but they, they've done many good games. Uh, I can definitely recommend trying some of them. Well, they're still setting up, so if you have any other questions, feel free to tell me, or ask me, or whatever. If I've played Fable, the last chapters, no, but I have uh, the... Um, the fable that they made pretty recently that was um was it like a remake or something that they released to to steam i think uh i have it but i'm not really played through it because back in the day i used to jump through games like back and forth really often uh, it was once i actually settled down with the smt games that i stuck to a series or or something like that. If I'm scared of heights, uh, both yes and no. I like if I go on a roller coaster, it kind of tickles my t stomach to to see the the height, but I, I try to to manage. <laughs> Uh, if there's any runs that I'm looking forward to, yes, there is. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I asked to um, help out as the donation host this um, midnight-ish, actually, because there's going to be the Resident Evil on the main channel, my mainstream. Uh, I also saw that Russian Clank is going to be on, which is really amazing. I've seen... Um, a few of the Raymond ones that I love because it's an old classic of mine. Um, I also saw, I, I, I've never really been into the Final Fantasy games that much. I'm sorry, people, but I've not really got in touch to that Final Fantasy uh, spirit. But there was this world of fantasy that was on this stream, actually. I think it was two days ago or something. And that is probably the most cutest game I've ever seen in my entire life. It really makes me want to play it. Oh my god. Uh, no, I don't run games specifically. Uh, I tried to learn Alice Madness Returns. And I was practicing that for, I think, four months straight every day, uh, so I can basically all the chapters except the last one. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right now I'm trying to learn um, the SMT game Nocturne uh, with uh, TDE uh, category, that stands for True Demon Ending on hard difficulty. Uh, it's kind of funny because like three or four weeks in after I had started to practice it, I was then told that it was apparently the hardest category ever to play in the Shimagami Tensei Nocturne series. So I was like, okay, but I've been trying this for three, four weeks already. So I put so much time and effort. So I'm going to continue with it anyway. <laughs> but I, I think it's fun. Uh, it's, I don't care about the RNG. I mean, that gives the game spice anyway. Oh my god, Diablo, of course. And anyone that is a true Diablo fan knows that the Diablo 2 is so much better than Diablo 3. I mean, if you could only take the graphics from Diablo 3 and have the same kind of concept that you have in Diablo 2, Diablo 3 would have been so much better. But now it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's true.
I mean, like the reason why I like Diablo 2 so much is because the character system uh, compared to Diablo 3. Because when you get max level on Diablo 3, you still have the same uh, skills like anyone else with the same class, which I find is kind of boring. That's why I like the skill tree in Diablo 2 a lot more. Yeah, I tried the Diablo 3 on release. I didn't really like it, sorry. But I can though tell you that if you like hack and slash games, you should definitely try Grim Dawn. Uh, it's uh, made from the one that also made Titan Quest. Uh, so I can definitely recommend uh, Grim Dawn if you, if you like uh, hack and slash games. And of course also Dungeon Siege. I mean, seriously, Dungeon Siege 2 is so good. I totally agree. Well, I didn't really play Don uh, Dungeon Siege 1. I started with Dungeon Siege 2 uh, and I fell in love with it. Uh, most of the times I usually have difficulty to stay with the game because I'm so all over the place. Uh, but Dungeon Siege 2 is probably one of the few hack and slash games that I could play for hours without getting bored for the reason that you can just swap characters between what you want to play as. If you want to play the tank, then play that. If you want to play the healer, you just swap. It's it's a very flexible game. That is one of the reasons why I love it so much. Best Toshi mode. I'm so bad at that. I the, I just know the normal ones like Kappa and 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 stuff like that and Frank Gersey and stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, I would say I would like. <laughs> it's so difficult to say. Pokemon is nice. Digimon is nice. But I think both are are nice in their own kind of way. I mean, I rather I rather play my games than fiddle with the Twitch emotes. I'm sorry, Cami. I can actually see who you are uh, subbing to to have that demo that emote because I'm subbing to him too. I'm from Sweden. Looks like they are ready with the tech, so I'm going to say over to you in a little bit. Well, uh, good day everyone, my name is Javi, I'm going to be running a New Super Mario Bros. 2 Special Edition. Here I have to my right to Danny Player 1. Hello everyone. So, if you have any questions on chat, yes, let ask us, we are the Bro Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so Not Mario Brothers. I will say to Tech uh, for putting the timer as soon as I can and if you want uh, I can generate fireworks but for me doing that and losing precious time you should uh, donate. So yes, because just let me know and you should know that it's a very good cause to save the children and as a teacher I've, I'm very aware of this. So mm. <laughs> whenever you're ready. Let's save all the children. So I will do a countdown to three and we'll start the game uh, when I say okay. Three, two, one. 